When the Allies and the Red Army made their way through Nazi-occupied territory, when the Second World War was over, what they found was disturbing. They came across concentration camps and the killing and inhumane treatment of millions of people. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. The absolute horror of the Nazi regime had been unveiled and what remained at one of those camps of Bergen-Belsen were hundreds of dying or dead bodies littering the camp and they had been left to rot once the Nazis had fled. Belsen was rife with disease and the starving and mistreated prisoners that survived the ordeal told the liberators the true crimes of the SS as well as naming the Nazi guards that had treated them with such contempt. Elizabeth Volkenrath was one of those guards and upon testimony of survivors, she was sentenced to death for her despicable crimes throughout the Holocaust. Elizabeth was the daughter of a forest worker and she was part of a large family with a number of siblings. She worked as a nanny, a cook and a hairdresser but her views and politics fueled her cruel actions and before the Second World War occurred, she was becoming increasingly obsessed with the politics of the Nazi party. She took her influence from the toxic policies that were outlined by Adolf Hitler. Elizabeth was never very intelligent at school and her lack of education left her with only a few options once she grew up. Influenced by Hitler's rallies, she joined the SS in 1941 and her first appointment was Ravenbuck Concentration Camp as a female guard in a strictly female prison. She was trained in her duties by Dorita Binns, one of the most notorious female guards in the SS. Elizabeth did her best to surpass her teacher in cruelty towards prisoners in her care and she succeeded in this feat. Her role at the camp was to keep an eye on the prisoners and to ensure that no one escaped. In March, Elizabeth applied for a transfer from Ravensburg to Auschwitz. Auschwitz at the time was being used as a huge extermination and labour complex and it was responsible for massacring as many people as the Nazis required. Elizabeth became a guard in the prisoner's tailor shop inside of the camp and then in August she was transferred to the women's area, Auschwitz-Birkenau. Birkenau was the main extermination element of Auschwitz and she became ill with typhus as the camp was rife with disease and she ended up in hospital. But when she was well again, she worked inside the parcel post in Birkenau. This is where she was responsible for inspecting different packages coming into the camp. She delegated this task to the prisoners and many parcels were from the Red Cross and the supplies inside these would be distributed by her. She was later transferred back to Auschwitz and became the camp leader of the women's area. She was promoted to the superintendent of the women's camp and remained in this position until Auschwitz was finally liberated. It was her actions at this camp and others that would see her accused of despicable crimes. During her trial, she was accused of taking part in the selection process. She chose people that could be used for forced labour and the others that she deemed unfit would be taken to be killed at the gas chambers. This is something she refused to admit during her trial as did many other SS guards. And not only did she choose whom would die during this process, she also forced these people onto the back of lorries where they would then be transported to the chambers. She claimed, of course, that she was unaware where these lorries would be taken to. Not only was she responsible for summoning the death of thousands of people, the ones that remained on camp were forced to work. The ones that remained on camp were forced to work and were subjected to disgusting treatment at the hands of Elizabeth. Many witnesses reported that she enjoyed beating many of the women and she had a habit of doing so. During her trial, she admitted to the lesser crime of slapping a woman's face, but denied carrying out severe beatings. But the testimonies of witnesses appealed this fact, offering evidence of a Vera Fisher who was beaten so badly that she needed hospital treatment for three years. Her slap to the face was actually beatings using a rubber truncheon 
and she would do it until the woman fell unconscious or died. Not only did this cruel woman use her anger at the world to inflict beatings, she was also responsible for starving the prisoners. One prisoner was only fed bread every three days and forced to clean toilets. Her torture was only stopped when she nearly died of typhus on top of starvation. She would take the food and water away from prisoners, leaving them with very little to survive on. She would force prisoners to partake in exhaustive exercise in a group form of punishment, and sometimes people were so starved and exhausted that they died. She was also accused of pushing an old woman down a flight of stairs who died immediately on impact with the ground. The woman had only asked if there was any work that she could do for her. The list of accusations and cruelty did not end there, and one girl who was sick took some vegetables, and she made her kneel down and hold the stolen goods above her head for four hours, until she could no longer hold her arms up. When the girl finally let down her arms, she beat the girl unconscious with the rubber truncheon. The other inmates were forbidden from helping her until nightfall. Her reputation within the camp was stark. She imposed a reign of terror on ordinary people that had been preyed upon for their religion. She would gain great pleasure out of the beatings, torturing and humiliating of the prisoners until they were unconscious or dead. When Auschwitz was evacuated, Elizabeth was sent back to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp and she worked under the beast of Belsen commandant Joseph Kramer. It was here that she fell ill again from typhus, which is unsurprising due to the depraved conditions within the camp. The hunger and desperation of the inmates was profound, and on the 15th of April 1945, the camp was liberated by the British. What they found was shocking. There were 10,000 corpses and approximately 60,000 prisoners clinging to life. A number of guards stayed behind, perhaps to betray a sense of innocence, and Elizabeth was one of those guards. The British soldiers forced her, alongside others, to bury the dead in mass graves, before interrogating her on the tales of the surviving inmates. Her crimes were presented to her at the Belsen trial, and she was charged with crimes committed at both Auschwitz and Belsen. Despite the mountain of evidence and witness testimonies, she pled not guilty, instead admitting to lesser crimes. She admitted to attending selections, but she did not know her selections would lead to the death of those not chosen. She admitted to slapping inmates, but not to the cruel beatings of innocent women. She even tried to portray that she had been a victim herself, and that she was forced to live like the prisoners but ultimately, she was sentenced to death for her crimes. On December the 13th, 1945, at Hamlin Prison, she was taken out of her cell to the execution chamber. Her execution was performed by British executioner, Albert Pierpoint. He was the executioner of the most notorious Nazi criminals condemned during the Belsen trials. The long drop method of hanging was used and the scaffold was built specifically to the condemned height. The women were executed first and Elizabeth was up. She was brought into the chamber and taken up the stairs to the gallows. She was placed over a trap door with an X on the ground that signified her spot. A cap and noose were placed over her head and in seconds the death of Elizabeth Volkenmar occurred. She was then declared dead and her remains were cremated. Elizabeth was a young woman who at such a young age was full of rage and violence and she was keen to inflict this on the innocent people at the concentration camp. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.